Hey all, Rob from Laram Woodcraft here. Um, a couple of months ago, I joined my local woodworkers club, and a couple of weeks ago, we had a, a project outing where we made a Rubo book stand. Now, some of you may be familiar with the Rubo um, workbench. It's pretty popular in um, you know the woodcraft and furniture building industry. But the reason why I want to show you the Rubo book stand, and let me flip it around here, is it's a pretty simple but neat design. So this is actually the one I made in class. Um, it's pretty small and it actually is perfect for holding my phone and sometimes I actually use it for filming because it's my uh, phone sits proud of the top and I can film with it. Here's one I made um, after the class um, just with a little bit more design in it. But the reason why I wanted to show it and the reason why I thought it was so neat is this is made from a, a single board. It is a three-quarter inch board, um, you know, however wide and tall you want it to be. This is about eight inches by three and a half inches. And what you do is you lay out your hinges. So this is, this is approximately where my hinges are going to be. And then you split the board down the middle up to the hinge points on both sides and then you lay out your hinges here so i'll probably have three hinges on this one you have to have an odd number and once you chisel them out on both sides it opens up like this and you have an interlocked hinged little book or phone or whatever you want to use it stand so that's what i'm going to show today all right let's get into it Okay, this book stand is a pretty simple project and you don't need many tools. You don't even need power tools. Um, you could use a bandsaw, optional. I'm not, gonna, I'm not gonna use a bandsaw on this. So what you're gonna need is you know, a marking gauge, a small square, a marking knife is definitely useful when you're laying out your hinges so that you have um, a place for your chisel to, to um, seat into. Um, a good sharp chisel. Um, instead of a bandsaw to resaw this or rip this board, I just use the um, the rip side of my Japanese pull saw. The only sort of specialty tool you'll need is a fret saw. And this is the Amazon knockoff of the new concepts fret saw. It looks identical. Um, I think this was 42 or $43. The new concepts is about 80. Um, the only um, issue with this saw was the blade that it came with. It, um, it came with, it's going to be really hard to see on this camera, but um, it came with a spiral blade. And this is no good for two reasons. One, the, 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 um, the kerf of the saw um, is too big. And also, since it's spiral, it kind of, it's hard to do a straight line. It wants to go all over the place. So also on Amazon, you'll see, um, if you look up fret blades, it will explicitly say, these are the blades that come with the new concepts um, fret saw. And these are just, uh, I don't know if it's pronounced Pegasus or Pegasus um, blades. And I think the, there was 12 or six, there were a couple of bucks though. Um, they were pretty cheap. So just get, um, you know, get straight blades, pinless straight blades. Oh, and the reason why you need the fret saw with the no pin on the top of the blade, like the coping saw, is because for the hinges, you're going to have to drill a hole at each um, hinge section. And, and you're going to have to thread the fret blade through and then hook it back up to your saw. So that's why you need a pinless um, fret blade instead of, uh, you know, the coping saw blades that have a um, pin. I actually saw a video where someone took a hacksaw blade and they, um, ground it down. So it was just like a point and, uh, they used that to get it started. And then they got, um, um, a bigger blade in there, but, um, the fret saw works really nicely. Okay. That's it for the tools. Okay, so the first thing you're going to want to do is your layout. So I'm going to start with laying the hinges out. And for this three and a half inch by roughly eight inch board, I think um, starting my hinges at two inches um, aesthetically looks good and it was it's good balance with my phone on it. So I'm going to 
I'm going to mark a line across at two inches. Then I'm going to come up the width of the board, which is three quarters of an inch, and mark my second line. And then I'm going to split the difference, which is, you know, half of three quarters is three eighths. And then I'm going to score my center line there. Um, now, these lines, once you draw them, or if you, um, you know, maybe not draw them, maybe you want to just mark them with your marking knife um, to begin with, but these are going to need to be marked with your marking knife so that, uh, you know, your chisel um, seats nicely into them. Now, once, and you're going to do, you're going to want to wrap this around and do it on both sides of the board. And then once that layout is done, you're going to want to, with your marking gauge, um, set it at three eighths of an inch and mark a line all the way around the board, but not through the hinges. You don't want to cut through the hinges. You want to stop at each starting point. So just mark your line all the way around the board and then, um, you know, just color it in with pencil so it's easier to see. It's, uh, you know, the gauge makes a very fine line, so it's tough to see. Um, so that's, that's your first, um, order of business. Once that is done, then we can start the chiseling. Okay, once all your rough layout is complete, then you're going to want to lay out for the hinges. And the only rule for the hinges is it just has to be an odd number. Um, so you can lay it out however you want, whatever is aesthetically pleasing to you. Um, again, this is a three and a half inch board and what I found was coming in an inch and a quarter from each side and then it's you know an inch and three eighths or so is the remainder in the middle and aesthetically that looks good to me so that's where my layout's going to be so you can see the ones on the ends are the same size and the one in the middle is slightly bigger then what you're going to want to do, this is very important, um, you're going to want to shade in where you're cutting so that you don't um, mess this up later. And it's just going to be every other one. So you're going to do this one, then this one, and then this one. So when you do your chiseling, you're going to remove this bit, you're going to remove this bit, you're going to remove this bit. And then when you bring it around, now I didn't get those lines there yet, so let me just do that. When you bring it around, you're going to want to do the exact opposite. So there's my lines, here's my center line. Oof, my center line's a little bit off. Come in an inch and a quarter on each side is there and that is there square them across square them across so on this side I'm removing this so on the opposite side I'm going to remove this bit and then this bit and then this bit again, okay? The next thing you're gonna want to do is lay out your end here because these are gonna be chiseled on a 45. So what you're gonna end up doing is making a little box around, like a little diamond and you're going to want to do this with your, you know, with your square, 45 degree on your square. Just like that. And this is going to be the angle that you chisel at for the hinges when you remove these bits. Maybe a little confusing now, but you'll, it'll make more sense as we do it, okay? Okay, next order of business after you've um, finished laying your hinges out 
all the way around your board is to um, drill the holes to thread your fret blade through. So what you're going to want to do is come to every corner and drill a hole. So you're going to drill a hole here, you're going to drill a hole here, you're going to drill a hole here, and you're going to drill a hole here. And then you're going to thread your fret blade through that hole, hook it back up to your saw, and then you're just going to cut straight down to your other hole, pull it out, and then do the same thing on the other side. All right, so let's uh, let's drill some holes. there. Okay, there we go. Four holes. Okay, so next step is going to be cutting um, your hinges with the uh, fret saw. So you're gonna wanna lock this into um, a vise or a clamp. Um, you're gonna loosen one end up on your fret saw and pull the blade loose. And then you're gonna bring it over to your workpiece and very gingerly without breaking the blade, you're gonna bend it and you're gonna thread it through the hole that you drilled, just like that. And then you're gonna wanna pull it all the way up, give it another little bend, stick it back in the hole there. Um, give it a little bit of a tightening and mine wasn't down far enough, so I'm going to loosen that back up, pull the blade up a little bit higher, tighten that again, and clamp it down. Now what I found with these saws is you don't want to make it too, too tight with this adjustment knob here because it will pull the blade out. You know, you're only clamping down with thumb pressure here, so get that so it's firm. I think I'm good there. My blade feels pretty taut. Now I think I'm gonna have to move this or just take this knob off down here because it's in my way. And um, so you're just gonna cut straight across until you meet your other drill hole. And I am gonna have to move this a bit. Of course lined up with my um, adjustment screw there and look and my blade came loose so it's a little fiddly loosen it up get it back on there get that as tight as I can get it with my thumb I probably had the tension a little too tight make it a little looser <laughs> Back on our way. And then that's it, I'm through. So I'm gonna loosen this up again. Wow, I really made that tight this time. Pull the blade out gingerly. Back through your workpiece. There you go, just um, that's it. That's all you need to do, and then repeat on the other side. I won't make you sit through another one. I know it's painful. Um, I'll bring you back when I have it cut and we start on the mortising of the hinges. Okay, so now that you've drilled your holes, you're gonna want to start chiseling 
your hinges out. And the way you're going to do this is everything above the center line gets chiseled at this angle. So this one and this one down here will both get chiseled at this angle. And the one, the middle one that is below this will get chiseled at this angle. And then the same thing when you flip it around. Everything below is going to get chiseled at this angle. Everything above is going to get chiseled at that angle. And that's, that's the only rules you have to follow. Um, some people I saw, to make it a little bit easier, they'll use a paring block at, I believe this is at yeah, 45 degrees. So they'll set a paring block up at 45 degrees to um, chisel it out. Um, you know, if you're more comfortable with a paring block, go ahead and do that. I'm going to just freehand this. So I'm just going to lock my wood down and, and here we go. So I am going to start with the, um, the 90 degree cut. So start that down. And then I'm just going to come back a little and clean that out. Oh, this is a lockdown. There we go. I'm just going to start removing material a little bit at a time by going back and forth between the 90 degree cut and then the 45 degree cut. And just take the time. Um, this is poplar. I don't know if I mentioned that earlier, but um, yeah, a good, you know, for your first project, you might want to use a softer wood like poplar. You know, poplar is pretty, pretty easy to work with. You know, you might not want to uh, jump straight into, you know, um, maple or something hard like that. So just take your time and and work it down a little by a little and before you know it you'll have your first hinge done and then you'll have all six of your hinges done or you know six halves anyway three hinges six halves so I'll just give you a shot of what it looks like and then I'll finish this up off camera because you get the gist of it. So, you know, that's that's the progress so far. So 90 degree cut here and then the 45. And Okay, little tip for when you get to the center hinge, um, you, you might want a little depth gauge to help you. When you're doing the end one, you have the line to show you where to stop. Um, you don't have that in the middle, so what I do is I take my marking knife, I hold it to the line, and then I score a line across the back. It's a little hard to see down there, but there's a line right there. And then I just hold my uh, marking gauge in the mortise um, and just check it periodically to make sure I get to the right depth. All right? Okay, I have my hinges all mortised out all the way around. And um, now I'm going to clamp this up and do my rip down the middle. Now remember, when you rip it, you're just going to go to the top of the hinge. And when you start on the bottom, you're just going to go to the top of that hinge too. Do not saw all the way through or you will have two separate pieces of wood. All right. Okay, so I'm just going to use my um, Japanese pull saw for this. And I'm just going to line it up on my knife mark. 
and slowly start my cut. And I like to have it kind of angled so I can see both sides at the same time. And you just want to slowly make your way across the board. Okay, so as you're cutting, you're just going to want to check periodically on both sides to, you know, make sure you're following your line all the way down. And just go slow, take your time, try and keep the, uh, the saw blade as straight as possible, and uh, you should be fine. And then, you know, all of you with a bandsaw, I'm sure it's much easier. Okay, I've made it through to my hinge line. Now to turn it upside down and start the second cut. Sometimes it's easier to uh, start the cut with the uh, cross cut side since it's a little bit finer. And then flip it over and continue with the rip side. Okay, she's through. Let's see how we did. Let's see if it opens up. Oh, a little bit. Oh, there we go. And voila. So, hinged out of a single board. So now the next step would just be to cut your shelf length, um, you know, up an inch or three quarters of an inch or so. Um, see on this one, just like this one, it's about, it's about, I'd say that's about an inch or so. And then, yeah, you can do, um, you know, you can do some scroll work on the top, on the bottom for your legs. And there you have it, little, you know, a little um, phone stand or a book stand. And like I said, I, I like to use this first one I actually made in the class. I use all the time to hold my phone um, when I'm reading or recording. So I hope you liked it. I'll put a link to the fret saw and the blades that I used on um, in the comments. And I'll see you on the next one.